Are you scared of birds? What should you do when attacked by a bird? And what's the scariest bird? All this and more on Gory Storytime. Warning. Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show by a son and his dad who thought that letting his five-year-old watch scary movies was acceptable. If you are offended by horror or talk about blood and gore by a child, or if you don't want horror movies from the 60s through today spoiled, then there is a remote stuck in your couch cushion next to potato chip crumbs. Use it. And of course, parental discretion is advised. Why? You didn't use any. Shut up and start the show. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And quickly, to answer those questions, <clears throat> you should be. Give up and geese. Seriously, those suckers will straight up murk you. Anyway, this week, we're going to start a series of four, because it's been a while since we've done one of those, which is weird. Like, we did a series of four unrelated things. That was our last series. <laughs> I, yes. Basically. Maybe it was more, I don't know, but it was at least. But we're going to do four movies that involve animals in some way. You know, whether it's bugs, fish, mammals, birds, birds. in this case. Um, so we're doing the classic Hitchcock movie, The Birds. And until reviewing it for this show, Jason has seen it. Exactly. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Basically, the story is a woman meets a guy at a pet shop. He's annoying to her. So after he leaves, she looks for birds like he was looking for and drives them hours up the coast randomly to this town like where she found out he would be. Five hours up the coast. So that she can deliver birds. She's not a bird delivery person. I don't believe she worked for the pet shop. No. She was just there, and this guy was annoying. So, of course, that's the love interest for the movie, because that's how it works when people really, yeah. like, your girl and or your guy ain't supposed to annoy you until you've been together a while. But anyway, that's just my take on it. And then, this is going to shock people, birds attack a whole town. They just, and all birds. Like, yeah. Everything that's a bird, them. Yeah. I mean, basically. And people laughed about it at first, but this actually ended up happening since this movie. Like, there was actually a time when, like, birds swarmed this exactly. one area. So well, it actually happened before this movie because he actually referenced a real event in the movie so that it would help scare people. But anyway, we'll get into that with the behind-the-scenes stuff, I'm sure. Um, why don't we roll the trailer so if you haven't seen this classic, you'll know what we're talking about. How do you do? My name is Alfred Hitchcock, and I would like to tell you about our good friends, the birds. <laughs> That's the damnest thing I ever saw. Birds just don't go around attacking people without no reason. Yes, they attack the children, attack them. What's the matter with all the birds? Birds are not aggressive creatures, miss. They bring beauty into the world. Those gulls attack. Impossible. They came in right down the chimney. Why are they doing things? It's the end of the world. Are the birds going to eat us, Mommy? Get yourselves guns and wipe them off the face of the earth. That would hardly be possible. Mitch, don't! The five continents of the world contain more than a hundred billion birds. All at once, the birds were everywhere. Why don't you all go home? Lock your doors and windows. Did you get the windows in the attic? When do you think they'll come? What happens when you run out of wood? I don't know. You don't know? When will you know? When will all dead? They're coming! They're coming!
I love me some Alfred Hitchcock. Let's just yeah. I mean that guy was hilarious. I mean, get ready for like twenty two minutes of us basically juggling his stuff because <laughs> like we're I just mean, fans. <laughs> I mean, like... I'm a proud juggler at that point, have, all right? Have you seen anything of his that you were like, mm, not no. so good? <laughs> I, no. You need to see more of his stuff, but, like, let's be honest. All right. Um, but before we get into the behind-the-scenes stuff, okay, what we need to do is let people know why we're actually here. See, somehow... People that watch this show have gotten this crazy idea that we review horror movies because we're horror movie fans. We are, but let's just cut through the BS. That's not why we're here. What we're here for is to make fat stacks of just cash. Just We, we want to spread it out on our separate beds. Just make very that separate. very clear. And just roll around in it. I choose to at least wear something. I don't know about him. He does it with the door closed. Whatever he's doing with his money, just be careful when he hands you money. Um, anyway, this week, the way we're making money is by selling out and promoting these products that actually exist. <coughs> They're available somewhere. Yes. Unfortunate name, or sorry, Gory Story Time is brought to you by Unfortunate Names, the trading cards. Made to look like 80s style Topps baseball cards, they come in packs of five with a stick of almost impossible to chew gum. Unfortunate Names is a set of cards that contains some of the funniest celebrity names. From race car driver Dick Trickle and football player slash commentator Dick, bleh, Dick Butkus to director Alfred Hitchcock and musician Engelbert Humperdinck. Unfortunate Names, collect them all. And by, and by, uh, the evilest pet shop. Uh, are you a fan of horror movies about animals? Would you like to go to own your very own evil pets? Then come to the evilest pet shop. We have the widest variety of in evil animals available: killer kittens, demonic dogs, fear-inducing fish, and even badass birds. The evilest pet shop. When we say beware attack bunny, we mean it. Absolutely. All right. Now, before we get into the behind the scenes, is there anything else you want to say about the premise or anything? Go watch it first. Like, if you haven't seen this, definitely watch it. Like, I mean, I know it says at the beginning of the show that we're going to spoil things, but, like, it's we're, we're going to spoil what, things. This is, this is a, what? 60, uh, a over 50 year? Yeah. Yeah. Like over... Over yeah. 50 years yeah. old. Mm-mm. Not happening. Yeah. So don't complain about spoilers if you haven't seen this. And if you haven't seen this, pause this, go watch it, and then come back. Because, like, it's worth your time. Anyway. Do you want to go f odds or evens? Uh, I can go first. All right. In, when audiences left the UK premiere at the Odeon... Leicester Square, London, they were greeted by the sound of screeching and flapping birds from loudspeakers hidden in the trees to scare them further. That is awesome. Isn't it? Alfred Hitchcock revealed on the Dick Cavett show in 1968 that 3,200 birds were trained for this movie. He said the ravens were the cleverest and the seagulls were the most vicious. Those don't even surprise me. Uh, several endings were being considered. One that was considered would have shown the Golden Gate Bridge com completely covered by birds. That would have been a pretty cool shot, I think. Mitch Zanich, the owner of the Tides restaurant at the time of shooting, told Alfred Hitchcock he could shoot there if the male lead in the movie was named after him. So Hitchcock gave, and if Hitchcock gave him a speaking part in the movie. Hitchcock agreed. Rod Taylor's character is named Mitch Brenner and Mitch Zanich was given a speaking part. After Melanie is attacked by a seagull, Mitch Zanich can be heard saying to Mitch Brenner, what happened, Mitch? Sure. Uh, Rod Taylor claims that the seagulls were fed a mixture of wheat and whiskey. It was the only way to get them to stand around so much. <clears throat> um, the schoolhouse in Bodega, California has also been known to be haunted even back during filming. According to Tippi Hedren, the entire cast was spooked to be there. She also mentioned how she had a feeling while she was there 
that the building was immensely populated, but no one was there. When Alfred Hitchcock was told about the schoolhouse being haunted, according to Hedren, he was even more encouraged to film there. That doesn't surprise me. Not at all. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock saw Tippi Hedren in a 1961 commercial aired during the Today, uh, the Today Show and put her under contract. In the commercial for a diet drink, she's seen walking down a street and a man whistles at her slim, attractive figure and she turns her head with an acknowledging smile. In the opening scene of this movie, the same thing happens as she walks toward the bird shop. This was an inside joke by Hitchcock. That's kind of cool. Um, Melanie wears the same green suit throughout the movie, so Tippi Hedren was provided with six identical green suits for the shoot. Hmm. Uh, Tippi Hedren's age was listed as 28 in press releases when the film came out, an unsurprising fabrication considering 33 was especially old for a Hollywood starlet, uh, making her... Weird that you said starlet that way. I've never seen that word before. Hollywood starlet? You've never heard that? Okay, no. Her acting debut, 1935, would be her commonly reported birth year for the next four decades until Hedren herself put a stop to it by coming out with her real age. When the children are running down the street from the schoolhouse, extra footage was shot on the Universal back sound stages to make it more terrifying. A few of the children were brought back and put in front of a process screen on a treadmill. They ran in front of the screen on the treadmill with the Bodega Bay footage behind them while a combination of real and fake crows were attacking them. There were three rows of children and when the treadmill was brought up to speed, it ran very fast. On a couple of occasions, several of the children fell in front, fell and caused the children in the back to fall as well. It was a very difficult scene to shoot and took a couple days to get right. The birds that were used were hand puppets, mechanical, and a couple were trained live birds. Uh, The crow that sits on Alfred Hitchcock's shoulder in all of the promotional photos was not in the movie. It was purchased after the movie had wrapped. A studio staff member bought it when he spotted the tamed bird on the shoulder of a 12-year-old boy walking down the street. The boy was offered around $10, but was hesitant until he discovered why it was needed. Tippy Hedren was actually cut in the face by a bird in one of the shots. Yeah. Uh, like, her, she was actually cut. Yeah. Uh, when this movie aired on NBC in the U.S. on January 6th, 1968... It became the highest-rated movie shown on television up to that point. The record held until Love Story in 1970 overtook it. From 1970. Right. Overtook it. In 72. Right. Tippi Hedren donated her script from this movie to the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, The use of standard blue screen techniques for doing matte shots of the birds proved to be unacceptable. The rapid movement of the birds, especially their wings, caused excessive blue fringing in the shots. It was determined that sodium vapor process could be used to do composites. The only studio in America that was equipped for this process was the Walt Disney Studio. Uh, UBI Works, Mm -hmm. uh, who had become the world's leading expert in the sodium vapor process, was assigned to the production. Tippi Hedren's daughter, Melanie Griffith, who's a famous actress, too, if you didn't know, Jay. I don't recognize the name. You should. Um, where was it? Uh, was given a present by Alfred Hitchcock during filming. It was a doll that looked exactly like her mother, Tippi Hedren. Eerily so. The creepiness was compounded by the ornate wooden box it came in, which the young girl thought to be a coffin. Yikes. Uh, one bird named Archine... Uh, really seemed to dislike Taylor, who played Mitch Brenner. The feathered star went out of his way to attack the actor, even when the cameras weren't rolling. Every morning, if we were on the set together, he'd come over and bite me, Taylor revealed. I hated him, and he hated me. The, this movie featured 370 effect shots. The final shot is a composite of 32 separately filmed elements. Jeez, um. Yep. Uh, The first time Tippi Hedren looked at herself in the mirror after the injuries makeup was applied, she reportedly said to the makeup artist, pardon me, Howard, uh, and then walked out of the trailer and threw up. Like, because they didn't have realistic stuff like that at the time, so when she saw it in the mirror, it made her actually sick. 
right. Uh, it was voted the seventh scariest movie of all time in a poll from British public by Channel 5 and The Times in 2006. In 2006, for this to be considered one of the seven scariest movies is weird to me just because of things that look more realistic that have come up since. Yes. But. And I forgot... Ah. To do the Rotten Tomatoes scores. So he's going to just Google it now. I am indeed doing that. It better be high. Because if it's not, I'm going to just... Oh, yeah. Oh, so while he's doing that, I'll explain. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't actually come up with a score themselves. I say this every time, but again, you know, bear with me because you never know if someone's watching their first episode of the show and maybe they haven't heard this fact. Um... They what they do is they take other reviewers' reviews, positive and negative, and they add up all the positive ones, and then subtract all the negative and come up with a percentage that is the percentage that said it was good. Exactly. Um, so when they say a movie's like seventy percent, it means seventy percent of the reviewers gave it a positive review. It doesn't mean it's a B minus. No. Or a C. Actually, right. 70. Um, what it means is that's just the average. And then they also have the people vote too. So the birds, according to the critics who are supposed to be experts, is at? 93%. I actually would go with what they have to say on this one more. And the people have it at 83. And I guarantee it's because Rotten Tomatoes came out in the you know 2000s. 2000s yeah like i don't think if if you went back before the internet and asked people i think the people would have it way higher um i mean it's a classic for a reason at least it looks like they uh the professionals looked at it and said listen like this is a classic for a reason but all right what was your least favorite scene um, I mean, probably just the th weird beginning where they were both in the store at the same time, and that's what sparked the whole thing. I get it. <clears throat> and that's not really, a, like, it's not even a huge problem. It's just, no. like, it doesn't it's, make much sense. Yeah, it's weird. Um, and mine would have to be just... They called it blue screen. Some people call it green screen. What, uh, it depends on what their color use. is. Yeah. I mean, they've they, got both. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've used other colors in that, too. Like, it depends on what the people are wearing, whatever. But the point is, it was used for so many things that made no sense. They had people on the green. Like, yeah. And then they would use green screen where they're standing in front of the schoolhouse. Why? They the schoolhouse was there. They had the schoolhouse. And the people were there. They had just showed us a shot of that person walking out of the schoolhouse. Yep. And then it cuts to a shot where it's obvious, like, you know, the obvious green screen where you could just see the outlines. You know what I mean? Like, it. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely. Now, this was the 60s. It's they didn't... forgivable for the stuff with the birds and the attacks and stuff like that. Because you don't want the but kids like, getting actually hurt by birds. Use a shot of that person who was just standing actually there. Mm -hmm. Standing actually there. It was overdone. And, it, you know, I, I don't even mind it being there as far as yeah like with the birds and stuff you didn't want people to actually get hurt because birds are actually vicious animals they are um but man it was it was weird it was weird yeah definitely um and you could tell the whole time like and it's like wait there's a shot where she's actually driving oh here's a shot of her in that same town green screen why they showed that she actually drove Throw a camera on her. <laughs> like it. it, it don't have to tell me. I, I mean, we were noticing that. The he whole was time. laughing, and I'm like, please don't think of this as some sort of comedy because of that. Like, it, well, that was the, you know, that was the technology that at the time. were purposely funny, though. Sure. Like her getting catcalled to reference a commercial she had been in, you know, years earlier. Yeah. That was an inside joke, but it was a joke. All right. Um, what was your favorite thing? Favorite scene, whatever. 
I I think I'm going to go with the acting, which I didn't expect. Okay. Um, the acting in this movie was on point. The children weren't bad actors. There were a lot of kids. And something that I've learned is children a little more difficult to control than animals. There are some things where you see children and you go, those kids can act. And then there's yeah. some times where it's stiff and yep. ob- we were, were just watching a show, it doesn't matter what show, and there's a girl that's a major character this season in it that we're on. And yep. every time she says anything or she's supposed to cry and be it afraid, just it's like so a fake. pretend crying face. Yeah. There's no tears. But no, in Hitchcock, he probably ran up to the kids and was like, boo, and like actually scared them. Like, he's he, like, yeah, he's sorry, you just got to call. Your parents are dead. Now go. Don't take that as an actual fact. I'm joking. But uh, anyway, yeah, my favorite part would have to be the aftermath where a lot of people were like, ha, this could never happen. It's nonsense. And, and then, then it happened. It legit happened in Maine, I believe, right? Yep. And that's the greatest. I mean, because, it's not. Prepare for the next bird apocalypse, but like... Well, there is a m- movie called Birdemic that you've got to see. Oh, no. Not for this show, because it would be like we'd have to start a separate show for like trauma-type movies. It's that level. Um, but what I was going to say is... Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Shoot. That it actually happened and how well, you think I that's great? And well, that's your favorite part? Is that it's no, real? No, my favorite part is... One of my favorite schlocky movie, B-movies, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, referenced this and the fact that it then actually happened. They're like, before you watch this movie about tomatoes killing people and thinking it's ridiculous, people thought that about the birds. And then in Maine, and like the whole preamble is explaining that that really happened. It's like, so laugh at your own risk. (laughs) And then tomatoes try to murder people because... Of course they do. I mean, right? It's a great movie, but like, so this I think we led to that. that. Uh, we uh, we did, yeah. we did. It was like an April Fool's episode kind of thing. Like we tried to do a comedy horror thing, and yeah. But anyway, so go back and find that one. It's uh, good stuff. Also a great movie. What would you rate it on a scale of one to ten? Uh, just because I gave Psycho a ten, I'd feel wrong giving this a ten because I liked that more. So okay. I'm giving this a nine and a half. I mean. So the 93 that the yeah. critics gave it is pretty close to what pretty you're giving. Close. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 9. I, I don't know about the half, but I'll give it the 9. Um, it's great. It really is. Like, you have to sit back and just... You, I mean, first I, of I'm all... I'm able to watch things for what they were. Like, you know, when yeah. we watched the Adams Family TV show from back in the day, what we don't was. sit there and go, but it's black and white. We sit there what and go, this is what sweet. What it is now. Well... That movie, that show, those, all of it, it holds oh, yeah. up. It's all the same for me now. Like, even if they colorized it, which would be uncomfortable. Yeah, I wouldn't like that, actually. But, like, even if it was exactly the same frame-for-frame frame show and they just did it now, I would 100% be okay with it. It holds up completely. I don't know that they would get away with some of the stuff, but oh, that's not what we're here to review. Anyway, so nine and a half, nine. Um, anything else you want to say about it before we I mean, do our normal... Hitchcock is a legend. There's a reason why his name is synonymous with suspense and horror. And for some reason, for me... And mocking like, sponsors on his TV show. Like, every like, episode was him just making fun of the wrenching comedy. Like, he, he... Dark comedy a lot, but a comedy. Lot. You know, he'd make threats to kill sponsors, like, on the way out to commercial. And yeah, before... Then he, come back and they'd be like a trash bag and something dripping from it. And he'd be like, welcome back. (laughs) And you're like, hmm, Hmm. (laughs) the Hellman's guy is in trouble. But uh, anyway, (laughs) that's not a specific reference. Very funny stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Um, All right, why don't we do our normal wrap up? So you can watch this show on channel 1070. You can watch Fact TV on channel 1076. Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and Fridays at 7 p.m. You can like us on Facebook, and like I always say, like us as Gory Storytime, and you can like Fact TV also, and they live stream a lot of stuff. They do indeed. You can go to factdate.com and watch a bunch of the back episodes of this and the current episodes of this. Can't mm. watch the forward episodes of this. The ones that we haven't done yet? No. Yeah. 
unfortunately. Don't have, Don't that, have technology. that technology. Yeah. Um, you could follow us on Twitter. I'm at Craig Jakes, all one word, all lowercase. Yes. Uh, you can follow me on the same app that he just said at Jiggly Firm Brain. I only tweet things that he says that I find amusing in or out of context. Whatever makes them amusing. Er. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that. Um, yeah. And oh, check out my YouTube channel, Juggalo Jakes. Just look for Gory Story Time. You'll get two options that'll come up. They'll be my channel and they'll be Fact TV's channel because I don't mind them putting it up on their channel too. Very much. Um, I mean, they're the ones that put out the show, so they put it up there. Um, so just, you know, subscribe to both. Heck yeah. Um, and that's about it, right? Yeah. So, so until next time, I've been your host, Jason. I'm his co-host and his father, Craig. And sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.